So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do a deep dive into planning a universal vacation. So if you're new here, hi, I'm Liz. I have been an annual pass holder at Universal for 14 years. And I've stayed a pass holder despite not even living in Florida anymore. I live in Texas. I've gotten pretty good at planning trips, especially planning trips that are on property. Today I'm going to give my advice, but if you wanna see vlogs from our trips to Universal, Halloween Horror Nights, Mardi Girl, all that good stuff, make sure to subscribe and also check the links that I have up here to other playlists. So I grew up in Florida. I grew up going to Universal basically since the parks opened. I went for the first time in 1991 and I even share some pictures in my last tips video so you can see those there. You guys have definitely wanted my advice as far as Universal and I am happy to give it. Today I want to go into more detail about the resorts, the parks, the various offerings at CityWalk, and just give you some more tips based on questions I've received since I made that video. So without further ado, let's jump into this thing. So first of all, let's discuss the resorts. And today I'm going to discuss staying on property. I have not stayed off property at Universal and gone to the parks in years. So I don't wanna offer bad advice as far as that goes. Universal does have partner hotels that you can find on their website and that's who they recommend. I don't really have much advice in that category anymore because it's been probably a decade since I stayed off property at Universal because I've either lived in Orlando or I traveled in and stayed on property. So the first step of staying on property at Universal is traveling to the resorts. And if you fly in to MCO, good old MCO, <laughs> then you have a couple options of how to get from the airport to Universal. It's about a 30 minute trip between the two. So you can either get a rental car and drive in and park at the resorts, which I'll talk more about why that might not be the best option later. You can take the Universal Superstar shuttle, more in a moment, or you can Uber. If you rent a car, it's very easy to do. You can obviously park at the resorts. However, all the Universal resorts charge for parking and it can be steep. I'm not sure what the current rates are for the value hotels, but we just stayed at Sapphire Falls and it was $27 a night to park your car. That adds up quickly. And I have to assume that Hard Rock, Portofino, Royal Pacific, those probably charge even more per night. These rates go up every single year. So parking's probably even more expensive now. So definitely keep that in mind if you're getting a rental car, it's going to be expensive to leave your car. And I would recommend, even if you need to go away from Universal property, if you want to go to iDrive, if you want to go to Disney while you're there, Uber is way cheaper, <laughs> especially if you're not going every single day. If you're gonna go on a lot of excursions, if you wanna to go to Kennedy Space Center, you wanna get away from Universal, then I can understand having a rail car. But if you're staying local, just Uber, it's cheaper. So then your next option is the Superstar Shuttle, and that is operated by Universal. However, I just looked up the prices today. As far as I can tell, the current prices as of March 2020 are $39 per person round trip, or $29 for children ages three to nine. And then if you only wanna do it one way, then it's $23 for adults, $18 for children. That can really add up if you have a lot of people with you. And even with that, that's, you're talking $80 for two people, whereas it's about a $30 trip with Uber. And you share that obviously with your whole party. $30 for an Uber or $39 per person for the Superstar Shuttle. I don't think the Superstar Shuttle's worth it. So my recommendation would be either get a rental car if you think you're gonna have a lot of excursions or just Uber to the hotels. It's direct, it's fast, it's convenient. We've had no issues with it. So my recommendation is Uber. And I guess we need to rewind because you have to pick which resort you're going to, right? And now Universal has seven resorts, about to have eight resorts, literally, the eighth resort is opening next week. There's a lot to choose from, and I just wanna do a basic rundown of the resorts so you can do a little more research on them if any of them tickle your fancy. So they have three premier hotels, which are Portofino Bay, which is Italian themed, kind of like you're in Venice. There's Hard Rock, which is Hotel California, Eagles song <laughs> sort of theme. And there's Royal Pacific, which is the South Seas. Those are your premier hotels. 
they're gonna be the most expensive, but you also get the most perks with the Premier Hotels. You're closest to property, so it's an easy walk or a water taxi ride into the parks, which means you get your own security checkpoint at your water taxi, so you don't have to go through the main security area. You just get to go through security before you get on the water taxi. With those hotels, you also get express passes, which might be a big benefit to you. For me, you just have to do a cost-benefit analysis of whether or not the extra fees at your hotel outweigh what you think you'll use for express, but if that's a big perk for you, if you don't want to have to wait in any lines, that's a good way to do it, is to have express from your hotel. You'll also get early access to the parks, but all the other resorts do as well. The water taxi is by far the most convenient way to get to City Walk, so that is a big perk, but you also get that perk at their one preferred hotel, which is my favorite, Sapphire Falls. So Sapphire Falls is themed to the tropics, so it's Bahamas, the Caribbean. It is gorgeous and relaxing and I just did a tour video of Sapphire if you want to check that one out. I love it. You don't get express with Sapphire, but you do get much cheaper hotel rooms. You still get the water taxi and you get some of the best food choices of any resort on property in my opinion. So it's a premier light. You don't get the express passes which matter for a lot of people, but you still get that feeling of being at a premier hotel and getting the water taxi. Then the next tier down, you have their prime value hotels and that's Cabana, which is my other favorite, and Adventura, which is right in between those two hotels. Cabana has a 1950s, 60s Florida theme, which I love. It's so well executed. I have Cabana Bay vlogs. I'm probably gonna have to start linking down below because I've probably used up all my cards already. So check out the links down below. I have resort tours from everywhere I've stayed. Adventura is one of the newest ones. It's just a modern, pretty stark hotel. It just feels like a hotel. I have yet to go inside it but I've seen room pictures and if you don't like heavily themed resorts then Adventura is for you. For these two at Cabana you don't have a water taxi but you do have very reliable bus service. I mean ridiculously reliable bus service. I don't think I've ever waited more than five minutes for a bus and I don't think I've ever waited for a bus leaving the parks. They usually have three buses lined up waiting to take people leaving the parks. Now that Adventura exists they do pick up usually Cabana and then pick up Adventura and on the way back they drop off Cabana and then drop off Adventura. You do share bus service but it hasn't really affected anything except for minor annoyance during Halloween Horror Nights when I'm ready to get to the park but otherwise best bus service I've ever seen at a resort hotel hands down. So with that Adventura you either get bus service or you can walk over to Sapphire and take the Sapphire boat if you really want to. So Adventure is kind of convenient, you get both of those options. Then on the value hotel side, you have the two newest resorts and then the endless summer resort, Surfside Inn and Dockside Inn. So Surfside Inn opened last summer, Dockside Inn opens next week. So I know little to nothing about these other than what they look like and that they have the cheapest room rates. The only transportation option is going to be by bus, but I don't know anything else about them because they're just so brand new. If you're looking for a very affordable way to stay at Universal, obviously not getting an express passes, you're only gonna have a bus. They're basically on iDrive where Wet n Wild used to be if you are familiar with Orlando. So they're a little bit of a trek from the parks. I don't know that you could walk, maybe you could. Seems like it would be a very lengthy walk and not one you would wanna do. Whereas you can walk from any of the other resorts if you really want to. Wouldn't recommend it because their transportation is fantastic and you don't need to, but if you want an extra walk to burn off some calories, <laughs> you can. So I could probably make an entire series just on the resorts, but very quickly, I do want to talk about food options. Basically depends on what tier you're in. So obviously the higher tier resorts are going to have better food options. Your value resorts are going to have more food court style. I do know Adventura has a nice rooftop bar that I haven't gotten to experience yet. Just depends on what park experience you want. There's always City Walk if you want the dining experience where you're going into a restaurant as opposed to food court if you are staying value. My faves are Cabana Bay and Sapphire Falls. The only other resort that I've had the experience of staying at is Royal Pacific. Once Sapphire came around, I felt no need to ever go to Royal Pacific again. I would love to someday stay at Portofino and Hard Rock just to experience them, but I just absolutely love and adore Sapphire and Cabana and can't imagine wanting to stay anywhere else other than those two. We're gonna move on to discussing the parks. So there are currently three theme parks at Universal Orlando and one on the way. So it's gonna be a while, it's gonna be like five years, but we have another one on the way and it's very exciting. So for now you have the original Universal Studios Florida, Islands of Adventure, and Volcano Bay, which is the water park. So I will say right now, I am not an expert when it comes to what tickets you should buy, how many days you need, 
that kind of information. I'm gonna try to give you my best knowledge to have you make an educated decision on your own, but because I've been an annual pass holder for 14 years, it's hard for me to judge that. Also, I haven't purchased a regular park ticket in 14 years. It's hard for me to keep up with all the different packages and options at any given time. There's always discounts for Florida residents and discounts for the more days you buy. Your best bet for that is to go on their website, check out what they're offering currently because it always changes. But I will say this, I recommend definitely getting the two park pass because that's the only way you can ride the Hogwarts Express. And the Hogwarts Express is one of my favorite things at the park. And also you have to ride the train both directions because it's different. There's a different video going from Diagon Alley to Hogsmeade and a different video going from Hogsmeade to Diagon Alley. So you need to do it both ways. And you definitely have to see the King's Cross train station because it's amazing. So make sure you do that. I would also recommend if you have enough time to do Volcano Bay, I I'm not much of a water park person, but I love that park. It is so relaxing. I am a chicken when it comes to water rides. I can do every roller coaster. Give me a tube ride with water and I'm like, Ooh, I don't like it, I don't like it. <laughs> I have only been on a couple rides, including probably the scariest one, which is the water coaster, which is a blast. I'm fine with water coaster. I'm fine with being propelled in a predictable way. I don't like the slish sloshing of a regular slide. Even without doing much, I love Volcano Bay. So I do recommend adding Volcano Bay to your trip. So with that, let's discuss the three parks a little more in depth. First of all, you're gonna need to get to the parks. If you're staying at one of the resorts with a water taxi, you'll go to the water taxi, you'll go through security there, you'll get to City Walk, and then once at City Walk, you go to either direction to which park you wanna go to. If you're staying at one of the parks that has a bus service or you're driving directly to the parks and parking at the parking garages, you will end up coming through the hub and then at the hub, is where you'll go through security. If you're a Disney person or just someone new to the parks, have no fear, Universal Security is fantastic. It is so fast. Ash is angry. Okay, there was someone at the door. <laughs> they have installed a ton of metal detectors and it's basically like going through airport security. So they have trays, you put your stuff in the trays, you'll walk through the metal detector. They've got someone checking your bag through the scanner to see what you have and you're out. There's none of this rummaging through your bag for 50 minutes, picking out everything, doing every single zipper. None of that. So much more efficient and fantastic. They have metal wands if they need to go over anything that you have a belt or anything like that. Don't stress about that. Even if it looks like there's a lot of people there, it moves very quickly. So once you're through security, if you're coming from the hub, then you're heading into City Walk. So you'll walk through City Walk first. And when you come down the main area, you'll either go left for Islands of Adventure or right for Universal Studios, depending on your plans for the day. So let's go over Universal Studios first, since that's the original. Universal, I would say, is the more chill park. It has a lot more screens these days than actual thrills. And some of the recent ride replacements have not been my favorite, like <clears throat> Jimmy Fallon, <clears throat> Fast and Furious. I would say must do's in Universal Studios would be The Mummy. It's fantastic, it's a roller coaster, indoor roller coaster. Still my favorite ride in the park, even though it's 16 years old now. Obviously you have to go see Diagon Alley and London. It's one of the best theme park lands that I've ever seen. You could easily spend a whole day or half a day just in Diagon Alley. Men in Black is a favorite amongst my friends and I, we are very competitive and I am the reigning champion of Men in Black. Also, have to do E.T. It's the only original ride in the park, I think, these days. I think that's the only thing left. Everything else is gone. So you have to go visit E.T., help him get back home and enjoy that little nostalgic ride through early 90s design. Also in Universal Studios, there's a few things. If you're a movie fan, you can see the DeLorean and oh, what was the train called? <laughs> The train from Back to the Future 3, they're both on display just outside of the Simpsons area these days. They've moved around a lot, but right now they're kind of in the trees by Central Park. And then if you love Jaws, even though he's no longer in the park, you can still go visit Bruce. He is tucked away. So if you've ever seen people taking pictures with him now, when you're in San Francisco, you've passed the Fast and Furious ride, you're walking toward London. You'll see Richter's Burgers on your right. And then there's a Shea Alcatraz bar. You need to go past the bar. So you'll make a right and Bruce is over there by the water. So if you want a picture with Bruce, the shark, that's where he is. There's also a lot of shows you can go see at Universal. 
I highly recommend the Blues Brothers. They're set up in New York various times of the day. Fun show to watch. They still perform live. There's actual saxophone player. It's great. Tales of the Beetle Bard in Diagon Alley, which are fantastic. I love the Deathly Hollows one personally. Celestina Warbeck in there as well. She's amazing. The Universal Horror Makeup Show, which is kind of a cult fan favorite because it's been there forever. At this point, most of us know all the jokes. Don't say it along with them if you do go, that's a faux pas. It's a really fun show, it's live actors, so it changes no matter how many times you go see it. It's a different pair of actors almost every time, so you're gonna get a different flavor added to it. And it's not actually scary, so if you're worried about it being like a horror thing, it's not Horror Nights. <laughs> it's totally fun and scare-free, for the most part. Universal also has a parade, and I don't know what time the parade is at these days, but they do have the Superstar Parade, which has Despicable Me, Secret Life of Pets, SpongeBob, Dora the Explorer, midway through the day usually. I think it's usually around 3 p.m., but it could change. could be 5 p.m. on the days when there's not Horror Nights. They also have roaming characters at Universal, so you can see Marilyn Monroe, Scooby Gang, Doc Brown sometimes, Simpsons characters, sometimes there's even Men in Black roaming around. Beetlejuice is a personal fave. You just never know, those usually aren't hard scheduled. You'll just be walking around and all of a sudden there's Betty Boop, but it's fun to get your pictures with them when you do see them. Food options at Universal, they're a little more limited. It's a lot of the same stuff. It's a lot of pizza, burgers, chicken fingers. Diagon Alley has different items, but a lot of counter service. It's mostly all counter service. There's barbecue, there's pizza, there's burgers. If you have a picky family who like all different things, then I recommend the Simpsons Food Court because they've got pizza, they've got seafood, they've got chicken, they've got burgers, they've got salads. It's pretty much everything you could want in one spot. And also there's the Bumblebee taco truck right outside. So if you want tacos, there's tacos outside. You can pick those up and bring them in. That has a little bit of everything. Oh, and I do recommend the new Today Show Cafe at Universal. Probably my new favorite. The sandwiches and other options they have are actually very tasty and don't have that obvious theme parkness to them. Pretty good. So over at Islands, I think this is the more thrilling park. There's more roller coasters, more thrill rides. There are also a bunch of water rides. And of course the big deal at Islands right now is that they have Hagrid's. My new favorite ride in Orlando, it is a blast if you can get on it. Unfortunately, I don't have a ton of advice on how to get on Hagrid's because I've only managed to do it once. And that was by pure luck of timing, walking up right as it reopened after being closed for four hours. So it is constantly changing how they're operating the ride. So unfortunately, I don't wanna give out advice and then be wrong. But the best advice I can give is get the Universal Orlando app. The app is super convenient for checking wait times, show time, park hours. That's the best way to keep an eye on Hagrid, see if it's closed, see what the wait times are. My trip last week, we ended up not riding it because the parks were way busier than we were expecting and it was sitting at 150 to 180 minute wait the majority of the time we were there. Love the ride, but not waiting three hours or four hours. You see a 60 minute wait, get in line. It's worth the wait, but 150, Eh, that's up to you. There are some must-see attractions at Islands, including Spider-Man, which is my favorite ride in that park, aside from Hagrid's. The Hulk, it's a classic. It's one of the best roller coasters I've ever been on. Prepare yourself, it's a blast. Jurassic Park, another classic. Kong, mm -hmm. it's okay. The Forbidden Journey ride, which is definitely a very creative theme park ride. If you're someone that gets a little queasy on rides, I would caution you that it is a little rougher than most rides just because it's a kooka arm, I think is what they're called. So it does a very, <laughs> it's a kooka arm. It does very strange movements, a lot of this with you, like this is you sitting upright and then this is you doing this stuff a lot. So if you're sensitive to movement that isn't just forward movement, I would caution you. I know a lot of people used to have problems with the screens on that ride, however, they are 4K now, so I think the screens are better, but it is a ride that I can only do once per day, really. Obviously you want time to explore Hogsmeade. There's so much to see. There's Butterbeer, Triwizard tournament shows and frog choirs and all sorts of stuff to see in Harry Potter. As far as shows at Islands of Adventure, there's not much. There's pretty much the stuff in Harry Potter and every once in a while they'll have the Marvel characters come out because Universal still has those theme park rights for Marvel characters pre a certain time. So. <laughs> The old style of Marvel, the very comic book looking Marvel characters will come out and do shows on 
four-wheelers every once in a while. There's no parades at Islands, it's way too small for that. Food options, now there are some better food options at Islands. Ethos, Mythos, however you pronounce it, is fantastic if you want to sit down restaurant. And then there's also Confisco Grill, which is pretty darn good. And that's right when you walk into the park, pretty much. Two good sit-down restaurants. Otherwise, aside from the Harry Potter area, it's all gonna be your typical burgers, dogs, pizza, sandwiches, typical fare. And then very shortly, I'm gonna touch on Volcano Bay because this vlog might be like an hour long. Volcano Bay, getting there, you'll either walk from Cabana Bay or I recommend walking from Adventura or Sapphire. They're very close. It was an easy walk. Otherwise, I assume you take a bus from your resort to get there or if you're driving in, you're gonna park at the garages and catch a bus from the garages to Volcano Bay. It's very easy. It seems daunting, but it really is not. Once you get in there, they use Tapu Tapu, which is a virtual queue system. I would say do some research on it, but it's very easy concept. You basically tap into the ride you wanna ride and then you're waiting in line for that ride and you can go ride other ones that have no wait. Or you can just sit in the lazy river like I did. Enjoy the lazy river while you're waiting to ride another ride. They have the virtual queue and a few rides at Universal Studios. I think Jimmy Fallon and Fast and Furious are the only ones that have it right now. Could be wrong on that. Those are the only two I've used them on and I have no reason to ever ride those rides again. So I have not used it more than once, but that's just my personal opinion coming into effect. They do have the option and it's through the app. So check out the app if you're wanting to use the virtual queue for Universal Studios. I don't think there's anything at Islands that have it, but Universal Studios has the virtual queue for those two rides. Whew. All right, we're moving on. And I think honestly, I'm gonna have to put this into two videos because this is too much. So one of the most common questions I get asked are how much time do you need to see everything? And it's hard for me to judge that because it depends on what your goals are, how much you care about riding everything in the park. Do you have express from your hotel? Are you going to pay to have express because you can purchase express? Are you okay riding single rider lines? Because if you're okay riding single rider lines, you don't need express and you'll be fine to see everything almost everything has single riders. So I would say if you have Express or you're okay riding single riders, I think it's feasible to say you could see everything in Islands and Universal in two days, but they would be very rushed days. If you want relaxed days, see everything there is to offer in the park, see the shows, see all the little hidden areas, get pictures everywhere, meet characters, dine, ride rides, everything, then you're gonna need more than two days. How many more? It's up to you and your pace. If you're really hustling, I think you can see everything in two days with Express or being okay with single rider lines. Use the app to check wait times. That's that's gonna help you a lot as far as planning out your day and not wasting too much time in line. It will also save you some walking. Lockers, <laughs> this is a big one. While you're at Universal or Islands Adventure, you're going to need a locker for almost everything you ride. E.T. doesn't require it. Spider-Man doesn't require it. A lot of the small kid rides won't require it. Pretty much everything else, including the Harry Potter rides, require a locker. Most of them have converted to the new style lockers. When I was there, they were still constructing the new ones for Forbidden Journey, so I'm not sure if they've converted yet. But the new ones are so much easier. For the new ones, all you need is your park ticket. And you go up and you scan your park ticket and it pops open a locker. You put all your stuff in the locker, you lock it, keep your park ticket with you, and go ride the ride. So much easier than the old way where you had to like use your fingerprint, no one could remember what finger they used or what locker they had. You had to put your locker number back in. It was very cramped and everyone's waiting in line to do this darn finger thing. And then if the fingerprint didn't work, they had to call an attendant. It was terrible. So thankfully the new system, way better. Scan your card, pops open, you're good to go. So make sure you have your park ticket with you at all times. And for specific rides, including all the roller coasters, so Rip Ride Rocket, the Hulk, they're going to have metal detectors. So when they say you can't have anything with you, they mean it. So don't be that person that puts your bag in a locker, keeps your phone in your pocket, or change in your pocket. They're gonna send you back to the locker. Seriously cannot have anything on those rides because it is a danger to other people in the park if your phone falls out of your pocket. So they're serious about it on those rides. Siri wants to talk to me. Oh, I said serious. And Siri thought I was talking to her. That's funny. They do have a universal dining plan. I've never used it, so I don't really have any recommendations as far as its value or if it's worth it. But I'm sure if you are interested in it, you can find out more information through their website. And then hopping between the parks, your options are to take the Hogwarts Express if you have that two park pass or walking between the parks, which I guess you would have a two park pass if you're hopping parks. So there you go. You can either walk or Hogwarts Express. Again, let's discuss CityWalk. CityWalk has a lot to offer in addition to the parks and the resorts. So CityWalk, you've got 
restaurants, entertainment, desserts, tattoo shops, shopping, a whole lot of things. So for restaurants, my favorites are Cowfish, Vivo, Big Fire, Margaritaville, Breadbox, Hard Rock, Red Oven Pizza, and then of course, if you're really trying to just eat fast, there's Moe's and Panda Express upstairs. For dessert, you guys know I am obsessed and I love Voodoo Donut. They are highly indulgent, but they're delicious. If you're not into that, there's also Cinnabon and a Cold Stone, plus probably even more stuff, but those are the main ones. There's also Starbucks delicious Starbucks. So obviously I didn't list all of them. Those are just the ones that I frequent and that I enjoy. There's also extra entertainment. So there's Blue Man Group. If you haven't seen Blue Man Group, would be really fun to add that to your vacation. I've seen them twice at the Orlando location and once in Chicago and all three times have just been an absolute blast. Highly recommend getting Blue Man Group tickets. There's also concerts at the Hard Rock all the time. It is actually a concert venue. So aside from just being a restaurant, they do have concerts there frequently. There's also nightclubs and bars and piano bars and karaoke bars all in City Walk. Not my thing, so I've never actually gone to them, but I know they exist. Also a movie theater and putt-putt golf, which if you're looking for an evening activity, the putt-putt golf is a ton of fun. There's two different themes. There's a haunted one and an alien one, and they're both super fun. Some of the best putt-putt golf I've ever done. Love those. There's also a lot of shopping, but some of the stores closed recently because they're remodeling, so I'm not quite sure what will be there by the time your trip comes around. City Walk is open super late, so if you stayed till the park closed and now you're starving, City Walk is your place. And you can also always resort hop and dine at any of the restaurants at the resort. So I think that's where I'm going to stop. I think I will do a separate video planning around the special events, including Mardi Gras and Halloween Horror Nights in a future video because I don't want to just absolutely inundate you with information and I have a few questions to answer. Let's jump into the questions. What is your favorite thing to do off the beaten path? So I would recommend exploring the hidden areas, especially in Islands of Adventure. Every single one of those pavilions has a hidden area behind it. so near the Hulk, behind Bluto's barges, formerly behind Jurassic Park, but now it's getting torn up for a roller coaster, behind Mythos, Mythos, and behind Seuss area. There are hidden areas, pathways back there, totally accessible to guests. It's not like you're going off the beaten path into security officer zone, but they're meant to be there and they have beautiful views of the lake and all the other islands. So highly recommend exploring back there. And also Universal is losing some of their hidden areas, but check out Sting Alley in the New York section of Universal. If you're a Horror Nights fan, you know of Sting Alley because they do scare zones in there frequently. But there's a little path through New York that a lot of people miss. If you turn by Fennigan's and just keep going down that alley, just look for the alleyways. They're there and there's funny little signs and shop fronts and it's really neat. Any advice you can give about booking annual pass hotel discounts? So that one's really easy. You just go on the website, you look for hotels and they have pass holder discounts on there. They don't always release all the discounts in advance, but I looked the other day and they were already doing discounts for the fall. It really depends on how they're running the deals at the time. I will typically look to see if they have a deal I like. If the deal looks good, I will book it because you can always cancel up until a certain date. So I'll book if I think the price is right and keep my eye on it. If I find a better price, I just cancel the original one. If you're someone who is really scared, do you think it will still be fun? Yes, absolutely. There are still rides like E.T. that are totally family friendly. With just Harry Potter alone, there's plenty to explore and try out and shop and just all the foods and drinks in Harry Potter world. There's so much to do that doesn't involve the ride that you can absolutely spend a day just exploring the park, checking out those areas I said in Islands of Adventure. I'll tell you a secret. I was a chicken the first time I went to Islands of Adventure and I wasn't riding roller coasters yet at that point. So I rode Spider-Man, I loved it. And I did the water rides and that was it. And I fell in love with that park that day anyway. So there's still plenty to do even if you're a scaredy cat. Do you advise morning or afternoon Volcano Bay visits? I don't know that I'm the best person to give advice for this because we've only been there in September, which is a very slow time. This recent year when we went in, Mike and I showed up very fashionably late and all the Tapu Tapu times were gone. So, well, I shouldn't say all. The one we wanted, which was for the aqua coaster, they were done giving out times for the day. So you do risk that with the virtual queue at Volcano Bay. But if all you want to do is go in and relax and ride whatever's available or do the lazy river, fast river, then you're totally fine showing up in the afternoon. If you care about low weights and just wanting to get on everything, then the morning's the way to go. Favorite specialty drink in all of Universal Orlando. So I'm not sure if he was wanting to know alcoholic or not, but butter beer. <laughs> 
If I'm going alcoholic, then I would say the drinks at Strong Water Tavern. I love Strong Water Tavern. I love the Cuba Libre and I love the Tavern Grog. And I really want to try their Mai Tai. I haven't yet, but I really want to try it. Strong Water Tavern is at Sapphire Falls. This was, do you recommend EPA or Leisurely Mornings and go to the parks around lunch? So the EPA is the early park access. I am not a morning person, so I have not done it. But I have friends who are, who have gone and woke up super early to do the Harry Potter early park access and it does look pretty magical I'm not gonna lie it looks pretty magical to get in the park and be one of the first people to go into Diagon Alley or Hogsmeade and be there somewhat on your own and get to experience all of that I'm not enough of a morning person to be able to do that so I am a stroll in a little later if it is a busy day like what we just encountered we did try to get there at park opening at least we weren't worried about rope drop but if you are there first thing in the morning, you are gonna get the jump start on weights for rides. So if it's a slow time though, you're totally fine rolling in the afternoon. Rope dropping Hagrid's is still very popular. So it's still a very long wait. So I don't know that rope dropping Hagrid's is any sort of benefit at the moment. Again, I don't wanna say anything too inaccurate for it. I don't think early access is helping Hagrid's at all. Okay guys, so I think that is it. That is all the questions I had. So I will go ahead and make a separate video that involves planning for the special events, including Mardi Gras, Halloween Horror Nights, and Macy's slash Grinchmas. So if you have any other questions that I didn't touch on in this video, make sure to leave me a comment down below and I will help you guys out in the comment section. Thanks for checking out this video. Like I said, we were doing a deeper dive, right? So thanks for watching. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to watch all of my adventures in the park and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.